Welcome back. This is USQ Open Day live here from our studios in the auditorium. Make sure you come across and catch up with us. We've had a host of our students with us and they'll be back very soon as we take a short break for them. Don't forget we are live uh, through uh, phoenixradio.com.au and also on Switch 1197am and on their digital service. But it's a real pleasure to have join us uh, live from Perth in Western Australia, one of our alumni. It's uh, none other than Caitlin Gribben. And uh, Caitlin, welcome to our USQ Open Day. And of course, as being one of our um, uh, alumni, it's fantastic to have you join us and we appreciate you taking time as an ABC journalist uh, too uh, and working there. Can you tell us though, firstly, uh, what year were you studying here at uh, USQ? Yes, yeah, so I first came to USQ in 2007 uh, and, and finished up my studies probably closer to 2010 because uh, during my final year of uni was when I actually got my first job with the ABC. So I was followed a path, I guess, that lots of students at USQ do where they maybe do a bit of uh, on-campus study and then uh, also use the, the external study option. And I, I think both of them were really good options for me. And so in terms of then following your career path, uh, what was the first step for you once you left USQ and getting to the ABC? Yeah, well, uh, I was really lucky that my first full-time job was with the ABC. Uh, it's sort of during uni, I'd done lots of uh, practical work experience, uh, everything from community radio in Toowoomba. Uh, I worked at the local paper in my hometown of Warwick, at the Warwick Daily News, and uh, I guess that was all sort of part of uh, my uni studies to, to sort of make sure that I was going to be a really good candidate for a job. And, and it turns out that I was, obviously, and uh, I got my first job with uh, the ABC, with its rural department. And uh, off I went to Mount Isa in northwest Queensland, which was a pretty big change, I have to say, from uh, the Toowoomba winter that I was experiencing to then uh, going to Mount Isa in July and having 30 degree days and realising that uh, I was about to be getting up at 4.30 every morning to, to be a radio <laughs> journalist. So, uh, yeah, certainly some changes there for you, Caitlin. And uh, the temperature wise, uh, I can certainly appreciate the difference. And a little bit of sulphur in the air too, I think. Well, yeah, um, the, the ABC had the, the great view of the mine uh, that's in the middle of the town, and so that was such an eye-opener for me. Um, but certainly, you know, getting that job was always my dream, was to, to be able to finish uni, or in my case, nearly finish uni, and uh, be an attractive enough employee for a, a big organisation like the ABC. And I certainly do put a lot of that down to my time at USQ and uh, the, the help and, and the guidance that I was given there. So, Caitlin, what are you doing now currently? What's your, your role involved there in Western Australia? Yeah, so since um, I, I sort of went to Mount Isa, I'm now in my fifth job with the ABC. Uh, I'm working for a, a new unit within ABC News, which is called the National Reporting Team. And it's been going for uh, about 18 months or so. And the idea of the National Reporting Team is to produce investigative journalism, uh, original stories. So really, it's a, a dream come true for a journalist to be given time to, to work on longer form stories. And, and then what, what we do is when we find those stories and, and we've done the investigation, we then produce them across all platforms. And I, I think that that's really the future of the media is that you can't just be a, a print journalist or a TV journalist or a radio journalist. They now ask you to be all of those things. And so uh, when I file a story, it will often run on uh, the, the National 730 program or Late Line. It will run on Radio Current Affairs, on TV news, on Radio News and online, of course, which is such a growing platform platform for, for journalists and I think for anyone uh, who's consuming the media. And so that's my role. I'm based in Perth as the, the national reporting team journalist. Uh, I, I work with a producer uh, who, you know, together we try and uh, dig up stories that maybe people would rather we, we didn't find. Yeah, well, that's, I guess, the, some of the joys and the challenges of, of investigative work. Uh, how equipped did you feel then, having looked back over the years and, and your time with USQ, uh, were you to now embrace what you are now taking on? 
I think from my very first day at USQ, I was uh, on the, the right path to being equipped for uh, a career in journalism and, and a career with the ABC. Uh, the, the reason I wanted to, to go to USQ was because I knew that some really great journalists had been there. For example, Mark Willisey, who's a, a senior ABC journalist who spent a lot of his time as a foreign correspondent. Uh, I knew that uh, some of the lecturers there were just fantastic people with, with great respect in the industry. And for me, that was that was key, was, was knowing that those people were going to be running the show, so to speak. And, and right from the start, we were writing stories. We were, uh, you know, we in the second year of our degree, we uh, started doing radio journalism, which we broadcast on community radio there in Toowoomba. Uh, we were always pushed to, uh, to 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 act like real journalists. We. Um, you know, we were expected to bring in story ideas. We we were expected to consume the news like any journalist would. And I, I think that's the big difference at USQ is that uh, really uh, students are treated like junior journos, and you you learn how to how to tell a story right from the very first day. And uh, I found it extremely practical. And as I say, obviously uh, with that coupled with my work experience, uh, a, an employer such as the ABC obviously had a lot of respect for the studies that I'd done and, and the preparation, I suppose, that, that I'd also done, uh, and, and they were happy to, to give me a job off the back of that. That's fantastic, Caitlin. Congratulations, too, on the awards you've taken out and, uh, and certainly uh, for this new role. It's a very exciting one for you, and uh, we're just delighted you could take some time out uh, on your morning, our lunchtime, uh, to be part of, of, uh, of our open day today. Thanks so much, Caitlin. Thanks for having me. Caitlin Gribben there joining us, one of our alumni from USQ doing journalism at that time in the Toowoomba campus. We will take a short break and we'll be back in the studio. We've got uh, Professor Rob McNeil from our own school coming up next and a whole host more, so stay with us. So you're coming to the end of Year 12 and you're wondering, what next? If you're like most school leavers these days, you'll be thinking about uni, but perhaps you're a bit unsure what's involved. Well, before you throw uni into the too hard basket, let's tip you through how easy an application can be. First, the dreaded OP. How can a number determine the rest of your life? It can't, so don't panic. For now, just imagine exactly how many Year 12 students try to get into uni every year. It's a traffic nightmare. This is where your OP and rank come into play. With the help of QTAC, the unis try to sort out the traffic, with stronger OP scores and ranks placed at the front of the queue. Depending on how popular a program is, there will be a cut-off, and this is published each year as a guide for the next. Remember, it's a guide, so treat it with caution. Who's to know how popular business will be this year? This is why your application is an important process to understand. You have the option to nominate up to six programs in preference from one to six. You could just pick one, but you'd be wise to choose six. Our advice? Use preferences one and two for your dream programs. Three and four for programs you feel are more realistic. Then five and six for what we call foot in the door programs. That is to say, once you're at uni, it's always possible to change the direction of your studies. So once you've sent off your application, it's time to cross your fingers and toes. You'll find out if you're accepted in one of three offer rounds. But if not, remember that where there's a will, there's a way. Even if you didn't get an OP or finish Year 12 for that matter, uni is still an option for you. Uni can be for everyone. It's a way to get ahead in life and secure your future. So give it a go. And remember, there's no such thing as a silly question. Ask away. And make sure you do talk to us right here at USQ and Eliza. It's like magical chairs here, yes. isn't it? Yes, <laughs> a little bit like you that. You go to an ad break and you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and it was great to catch up with Caitlin. Yes. Oh, and my And I goodness. know, it's terrible. Oh, you missed I it. I missed it. Yes. Oh, but I, I applied recently for a yes. job with the ABC in Mount Isa and I yes. think I might be sort of taking over what she used Absolutely. to do. Absolutely, and I'm quite oh. sure we're going to see you uh, on the ABC Maybe. as well uh, in, <laughs> in time to come. I'm sure we will. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, in the studio right now, we have yes. none other than Professor Rob McNeil. How are you, Rod? I'm well, thanks, Ashley. Grant, and great Eliza. to have you with us in the studio yeah. and uh, get you away from the, from the crowds out there and, and the presentations sure. for a moment. Yep. In terms, though, of uh, the creative arts and, and the whole school of, of arts and communication itself, yep. uh, big changes, but very exciting changes. We move into 2015. Absolutely. I think the exciting thing, particularly for uh, Springfield, is the new uh, film, television, radio uh, 
program that we'll be developing here that uh, really is uh, the best of what we were doing with applied media, but with the addition of uh, the creative aspects of uh, computer mediated art, animation, and all of that sort of thing. It's really all of USQ's capacity in, in the applied media space being brought together in the one degree. So that's, uh, I think, a very exciting development for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And mm. can you talk us a bit, uh, just through a bit more about what will be changing, uh, aside from the incorporation of the more computer-based mm. sort of programs? Well, um, the Bachelor of Creative Arts in the past has focused uh, majorly on things like uh, theatre, uh, on visual arts and music. Mm -hmm. And I think bringing um, the FTR area into the creative arts mix means that our capacity to be able to deliver quality music education, quality theatre education, quality visual arts education is now added into the mix of what we can do with uh, trans uh, transferring that information with uh, television, with media, with documentary films and so on. Um, I think it's really joining the strengths we have at USQ in, in one really quite exciting program. There's a lot of things that doesn't change though. Um, at USQ we've had uh, over 40 years experience in delivering theatre and music education for instance. So uh, what we're doing uh, in this space is uh, grounded in a lot of uh, real experience in, in the creative arts. Mm, we've absolutely. created practitioners for many years uh, that are working right throughout Australia. Absolutely. Mm. And in terms of the day, yes. uh, we know we've kept you very busy. <laughs> so, um, uh, in terms of the booth, though, the marquee, uh, sure. lots of people coming through. Lots of people coming through. Um, we represent, by the way, not just uh, um, performing arts, but also the whole area of humanities and communication. Mm. So, uh, I represent some 17 disciplines in uh, in our school, mm. and we're the most diverse uh, part of USQ. Um, I'd argue, in some ways, maybe the most exciting. Uh, in terms of the range of, of, of courses well, we're not that are going available. To argue. No, I think you're right, Rob. I, I think we're, we're a pretty exciting bunch. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. And a little bit colourful. Very colourful. <laughs> That's right. They always say to us on this campus that uh, they always know the art students. Yes. Uh, and I think they probably mean the staff as well, but I'm not sure they don't go that far. So, uh, but anyway, we like to be creative. Oh, absolutely. And it is Very great. Good. And of course, uh, Eliza, mm. doing journalism here is an example of, yes. uh, of just the, the mm. great synergy between doing what will now be film, yes. television, radio and being able to major yeah. into those sort of areas. Yeah, and it's not just mm. journalism. Uh, there's mm. marketing, mm. Uh, education, theatre. Sure. Will that really be affected by the change? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, it really depends on what students uh, want to do with their degree. The, the ability for them to be able to put in uh, a second major or minor is still available in the Bachelor of Creative Arts, as it is in our arts degrees. I think the plus is that students can do more of what they want if they want to, but can still mix and match with other areas to prepare themselves for a career, say, in teaching if they need to, teaching areas, or if they just want to be a little bit more versatile, like, for example, being working in television or journalism as well. It's still possible. Yep, no, that's fantastic. Well, I know it's uh, been a massive year, and yes. we do appreciate you taking your time out. You've got another session to do Absolutely. very, very soon, so we'll let you get to that one. But, Rod, thanks for taking time and chatting with us today. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Eliza. No worries. Professor Rod McNeil, the head of school for the School of Arts and Communication. We're going to uh, take a short break. A little break, bit of a break. And then we'll yes. come back to tell you more of what's coming up for you right here at USQ Open Day Springfield.